Welcome to the 30th anniversary of Real Affirmations LGBTQ plus International Film Festival held October 20th through 22nd, 2023 in our nation's capital. This year's Historical Film Festival presents 58 new, retro, and compelling international documentary, short, and feature films from 22 countries. 32 films were screened live at the state-of-the-art movie theater inside the Eaton Hotel at 1201 K Street Northwest in Washington, D.C., and 43 films can be screened virtually from the comfort of your home or on that long commute. Joining me today are a couple of the filmmakers, and they are the filmmakers who have made this compelling film, Girls Don't Cry. So welcome, for, uh, and, and Andrea and uh, Francesca. Tell us now, where are you joining us from? And um, say more about the film. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are here from uh, Rome, Italy, and uh, what can we say about the movie? It's it's a uh, it's a coming on age, mm -hmm. and uh, um, an Arab, Arab movie. movie, Arab movie. So um, um, in Italy, it's not uh, a genre uh, that is has been um, uh, made. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's really rare for for us uh, to uh, pick these two. Uh, very specific uh, genre and uh, put mm -hmm. together. So uh, we tried and uh, we just wanted to uh, take these two girls uh, uh, different from uh, behavior and, um, you know, backgrounds and mm -hmm. uh, all this stuff and uh, put them on the road and uh, just uh, um, see what, what would happen. Uh, and you know, like every road movie, uh, for us, uh, the, the destination was not uh, just a, a physical uh, place uh, to reach, but it's uh, something more um, uh, interior. Mm -hmm. And what so you didn't just try to tell the story, you told a great story. One of the ways that I think a story translates is that it could have been any two girls from any in any country, from any culture, because the the dilemmas and the joys are so relatable, you know, uh, just across the board. And so I think it's a, a wonderful, not only attempt, but successful attempt. So what other films inspired you to make this film since you said that this genre is new in your area, in the cultural context. So are there any other films that, um, whether it's from cinematography or risky storytelling, that inspired you to make this particular film? <laughs> yeah. um, it's strange because uh, um, there are a lot, a lot of movies that for us were uh, so important, reference. yes, full reference, but uh, are very different. Um, I, I can tell you, obviously, Tell Me Louise by Ridley Scott was one of them, uh, but also uh, more European movies like uh, uh, Blue is the Warmest Color, uh, La, 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 Vida La, La Vida del, or um, another indie, uh, American indie movie that um, Live Not Live Not Race. I, I don't remember the the, the original uh, title, but I, I guess it's uh, Live No Trace by Live No Trace. Uh, you know the director of Winter's Bone. Okay. Um, okay, those are great because um, I first of all I wrote down blue is the warmest color. That sounds so uh, interesting to watch. So I'm going to look that one up, and we'll find the others just for fun. <laughs> yeah. So, without giving away spoilers. <laughs> um, <We try. laughs> what other what themes do you want our audience to to know to see um that ran through the film that you want us to be aware of or reflect on we were really interested about uh female friendship and um how 
it can transform during the time because we thought that um, females in particular, girls, uh, when they are very, very young, um, are capable to, um, to connect uh, between each other in a really special way because we are um, more basically free to express our feelings um, comparing with male, basically, because of patriarchy, you know, mm -hmm. is, uh, is simple. So maybe in, in this freedom to be uh, connected and to touch uh, themselves and to stay together in a really close way, we can also explore easily and better other things, other feelings, uh, and also the connection with our body in, um, uh, in, in the relation with another body. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for we think for for us uh, as girls is easier and um, um, also express uh, that kind of feelings that um, allow you to hug a friend to touch a friend mm -hmm. um, and we were really interested in uh, this kind of relationship that is in a, in a border between the friendship and love mm -hmm. that is really common when we are young. Uh, in uh, 15, 18, 20 years old, it's really common to to explore something that is like fluid. That is not, mm -hmm. you know, so um, specifically. Uh, the, the definition is still, you know, in a, in a flow, and you can't just uh, define. And for us, is interesting uh, this uh, this this humus. That's wonderful, and uh, that's so, and it's captured so beautifully, and it takes you back to that age group where you were unencumbered by gender, or unencumbered by misogyny, or unencumbered by machismo. To where, and I think men and women will be able to relate because even guys are going to identify with that moment where they had to make the decision of um, tapping into these emotions as opposed to saying they're supposed to be this as opposed to exploring. That is a, a wonderful uh, a way to draw us in. So when you talk about the moment that they explore body, talk about the actors, their, uh, how they were cast, their level of uh, being comfortable with that scene, with those scenes, and um, whether or not they identify as on the compendium of LGBTQI plus. Uh, for me, it was, you know, it's um, um, the scenes in the movie. Um, are really soft about their, their um, uh, you know about the sexual expression. So um, we wanted to um, keep this kind of uh, uh, mood uh, to um, all the, the filmmaking. So uh, we shoot uh, uh, that since uh, the, the very last days, and uh, because so. Both of them, of the main uh, actress, were, uh, you know, um, they know themselves. So mm -hmm. there was a relationship uh, between them uh, uh, and uh, it was really, um, uh, you know, I, I can say it, it was uh, it was easy for us to uh, shoot that, that scenes because um, there was uh, really a, deep uh, uh, trust uh, mm -hmm. from for, from each other okay um so uh, so they, they, they were already friends because we spent like three years in casting so they knew each other uh, during a callback and uh, they exchanged their, their numbers they uh, kept in touch during the three years when we were choosing and seeing actresses they were already friends when uh, we chose them. And uh, so oh. at the first day of set, uh, they had already a connection. We, we, we honestly, we, yeah, we, we, he worked uh, on the directing 
but they were already really, really um, connected with, with um, a deep connection and deep friendship. Um, uh, like, for example, one of them, Emma, the main character, she uh, didn't live in Rome at the time we shot the film. Uh, Anastasia, the, the, the Romanian girl, mm -hmm. um, uh, already lived in Rome. But when Emma uh, came to Rome to um, castings uh, in other films, uh, they spent the time together. They were already friends. So when we started shooting, uh, it was very easy because uh, they knew each other. They are already knew Andrea. They, they I don't know. They, it was pretty easy. Also, we we had a um, a small crew, very young, and everyone was comfortable in staying together in 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 a free way. Also, we are Italian, so uh, when when the directors when the director is sensitive, a sensitive person, and is he respects the time, um, uh, and um, you know also the sensitivity of the the actresses. Um, it, it's not strange. It's not weird. We, it, it, it was really easy. I, I can say thing. something more because uh, uh, you know, um, pandemic has uh, broken a lot of movies uh, that were about to be shot, and uh, our movie was delayed for two years and a half. Uh, so we. Um, we did the casting, but we hadn't choose them. We were, you know, at the moment when you are, you have uh, three or four girls for every character, and you just try to uh, match one with another, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, with, in the callbacks. So we did the callbacks, and then the film delayed for two years, and uh, there was something special. Uh, happened when Anastasia and Emma made their callback. They knew each other in that moment and uh, changes, um, changed the uh, respective numbers. So when after two years and off, uh, we uh, made other you know, uh, castings to, to see if we lost something new, you know? uh, we just uh, find that uh, their, the, 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 these two actresses were still the best choice for us. So they were friends <laughs> for, from two years. We didn't know this. They were asking for two years, uh, maybe this film will never be shot. We don't, don't know anything they didn't about choose, it. Uh, they, they didn't choose us. <laughs> so yeah. we, it was a... Um, in the, in the yeah in the bad luck of the pandemic you know uh, it was lucky for us to uh, the catch delay. them and uh, have to oh. this kind of uh, relation with them now that is the story within the story that is the film you know <laughs> out, that lives outside the film how beautiful and what a lovely gift to give us that survived you know covid because there were so many changes in our culture. So this is a, a happy ending or a, yeah. a bright light in that global uh, pandemic and our sense of um, loss and how many people found themselves uh, nesting with each other, you know, just to keep that, that close contact. And so uh, that's a wonderful backstory to a film that was um, delayed and then made with, it's, you know, we say art imitates life. And this time life <laughs> created yeah. the art, <laughs> essentially. So yeah, it's true. that is such a beautiful story. And I like those kind of stories and our patrons will like those kind of stories uh, because they'll get a preview of our interview and some may even go back and watch it after they watch your film and watch it again with some aha moments and look for uh, definitely some of the sweetness of that authentic connection between those girls and your wisdom to definitely cast them. <laughs> What type of equipment did you use? And I asked that because we have young filmmakers, a part of our festival, and um, we're, they're always interested in funding uh, the, the, um, the equipment you use, such as your cameras or any other special um, effects. And um, 
just the, well, you had the unique condition of COVID, but once you began filming, how many days did it take you to film? Okay, uh, we shoot, yeah. <laughs> we shoot with uh, an Ari Alexa Mini. Uh, and um, we had uh, a very small- uh, Four weeks. Year. Four weeks of Yeah, it, it was 24 days of shooting. Uh, so we were, you know, always in a hurry because uh, uh, every day we uh, mm -hmm. changed the location mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have, uh, because we, we uh, traveled around Italy, so we didn't have a cover set and, uh, you know, when the Rain, yeah, you need to raise, raise, and you keep <laughs> raining. When you see uh, scenes in the movie where outside it's raining, it's because it was actually <laughs> raining. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's uh, if uh, there is too much sun, you take too much sun, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, so it was really um, adventurous as an experience, like the film. Um, mm -hmm. About the lenses, we just uh, we had four or five lenses. Uh, it, it was really a small equipment. And uh, with the uh, director of uh, photography, Semi Paravan, um, we chose to um, use uh, almost uh, always uh, uh, only two lenses. And it was uh, both, uh, you know, a wide angle lenses, mm -hmm. uh, 25 and 35 millimeters. So uh, we used to, Make the close up uh, a lens that you usually use for make uh, you know the uh, wide uh, shootings. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were a small crew. It was uh, I guess thirty five uh, people, uh, and uh, this um, um, you know connected us, uh, mm -hmm. made us yes. uh, feel so uh, united. And um, and I think that for uh, young filmmakers, uh, if uh, they don't need uh, you know much equipment uh, for realize their their stories, uh, uh, I think that choose uh, a small group uh, and uh, friends. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're still friends after two years from shooting. We're uh, we're still uh, uh, friends. So it's uh, beautiful and. Um, you know, it's not all. all it's not only um, a work that you're making. It's not only about professional. It's an experience. Yes, life experience. It's a life experience. It was uh, a life experience. You have to do it with uh, um, people that, that uh, love the, the film, love the project, but that love themselves too. That's so sweet. So, when you were moving on, lo filming on location, in the public. Uh, did you get any pushback or any resistance to your subject matter from the people around? No, even be even because we, we we were often in uh, desert places without many people. There are not big cities uh, in the film, so it was pretty easy uh, in this way. The, the difficult thing was that we had a motorhome uh, driven by a young girl <laughs> that had the, the dri driving license uh, since, I don't know, two or three months. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she, she drive herself all the time. All the scenes. She drives we we and, didn't have, uh, you know, yeah, a, uh, a stunt, stunt driver uh, for someone that. that could do it. So she, she, she does. And uh, it's really difficult because, you know, also the, the it was a really old camper. Yeah, like it was like 80, 85, 86 uh, camper. So for Emma, it was pretty difficult also, you know, to, to just to, to try to stay on the road. <laughs> so it was the main difficult on the field. So it was a lifelong experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We are still alive. So yeah, it's... <laughs> everyone is still alive. Yeah, also because we will basically lived together in the same hotel for 24 days all the time, day and night. So it, it was also easy to... Um, to, to basically to, to, to become friends with all the crew members. That is so sweet. Um, so what was left on the cutting room floor? Are there any scenes that either didn't fit the finished product as story or in time? What was left on the cutting room floor? Uh, we left uh, about uh, 15 minutes. Um, 
um, there was there were scenes that you know uh, you think uh, when you're writing uh, that you need to explain more uh, about uh, backgrounds or you know just uh, uh, scenes that you think they are important and uh, it's it's not this uh, it's not true yeah, when you add it uh, you discover that maybe it, yeah. it was not true I, I think one one of the maybe one uh, one of our regrets about <laughs> this uh, it's the the first act uh, you know it's it's a movie where um there are a lot of things that uh, have to happen to make this uh, trip uh, start mm -hmm. okay so uh, um, we were aware of this uh, we we had to uh, we had to you know um, um tell so much about uh, uh, characters, uh, their, uh, uh, you know, the, the mother, the father, the photography and all the stuff. So um, I think uh, in the first cut, uh, there was three, there were three, four minutes uh, more of, um, you know, uh, just of the setting of the movie. And it was a little unbalanced with the, the rest. So we chose to cut uh, and mm -hmm. maybe explain things uh, uh, along the way that's yeah. like writing a good novel you have to write it and then edit so yeah. that's good what were you going to say francesca no that we basically we weren't able to cut during the writing part of our work we, because we were um really affectionate on the project uh, we, we spent a lot of years uh with all all our characters, so it was very difficult for us um, j just to mm, fix the problems in writing. And it's a, of, of course, it's a mistake, but we honestly weren't able to do it. So we had to do uh, later, and it's yeah. a regret for us because often we, we think if we were able to cut something in writing, maybe now <laughs> it would be uh, better, more, maybe more, more fluid, all the ed the editing and- uh, Or more time to shoot yeah. uh, something that you left on the exactly, cutting that, room. Cutting room, or, 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 or we had to shoot something very fast because the locations are were, were very, very difficult to stay, like the woods and- uh, yeah. Uh, some roads, so maybe uh, more time for the shooting because less pages, <laughs> but <laughs> we couldn't. <laughs> so, you know, the, the result is uh, is like um, in the middle between the, the intentions that we had in writing and then the results that we had in shooting. And uh, but we are pretty happy because we, we still are uh, really, you know, um, in love with this film yes and <laughs> we are too <clears throat> and i think our patrons are going to fall in love with your courage now but also with the story because it's so relatable and so thank you all for joining us today the um, makers of girls don't cry is screening at um, the LGBTQ Real Affirmations Film Festival. Make sure you um, uh, stop by and visit it. And if you've, if you've seen it already and mm -hmm. you see this interview, I know you're going to be compelled to go back and look for those <laughs> sweet moments and nuances again. Thank you very Tickets much. for the film festival can be purchased at the DC Center backslash Real Affirmations and expect all of the fields, laughter, tears, reflection, and awe. And so on behalf of Kimberly Bush, the director of the DC Center and Real Affirmations, we invite you to join us for this iconic film experience. Signing off with immense gratitude to our filmmakers, our supported patrons, and our August ro roster of sponsors, Muriel Bowser's Office on LGBT Affairs, Gilead, the AIDS Health Foundation, Wegmans, and Tito's. Thank you, and we'll see you at the movies. <laughs>